Hey guys, Frank here, welcome in our studio in Emmeloord. And as you can already see, today it's about the new BenQ monitor, the SW272U. What's in the name, right? Well, in all honesty, I'm not really big on doing video reviews on monitors. I'm more like, let's do a review written because there's a lot of technical stuff. And I already did this with a lot of monitors on BenQ. And the thing is, today I don't feel like doing the technical stuff. Of course, I can tell you about Groma upsampling, support for BT2020, ALG, HDR, HDR10+, plus, of course. We have the new Gammas, of course. We have our setup for comparing sRGB with Adobe RGB. You can compare black and white and it's just a freaking awesome monitor and it hits all the sparks. But today, because it's a video review, I just want to point out the stuff that really caught my eye. And again, all the technical stuff you can find online and just read about it and learn about it. And it's very interesting stuff. But for the video, I want to do something else. And I want to address some stuff that over the years always was a question mark for me. Like, why didn't they change this? Is it so difficult? So let's start by point one. the design of the monitor. As you can see, and I'm showing some images now, it's a totally new design. It's, I think, more, well, more futuristic. It's more industrial, depending on what you want. And it creates a very, very clean look. Almost no bezels, and it just looks awesome, let's be honest. Now, I love the leather over here, it's leather look. And the thing about this is that you can place your, for example, hard drive on here, your color checker, your color analyzer, and it doesn't move around. It's, it's, it's not sticky, but it's sticky. You know what I mean, right? It, it doesn't really, when you press on it, it doesn't stick, of course, but if you put something on it, it doesn't move around. Another thing that's really caught my eye is actually the 90 watts charging of your laptop. And you might wonder like, hey, 90 watts charging of your laptop, so I have to put a cable to your laptop. Yeah, but you always had to connect your monitor to your computer because you're using hardware calibration, calibration inside the monitor instead of doing it via the operating system. So there was always already a USB cable running from your computer to the monitor. And in most cases also HDMI or mini display port. As you can see here, I have a very, very clean setup. I only have one USB-C cable in my laptop and I have the monitor running. So what's going on here? Well, first of all, it's possible, of course, over USB-C or Thunderbolt to also transport a video. 4K, no problem at all. As you can see here, we're running 4K. The thing is, however, that by using only one cable, you can choose to have a very, very clean setup, but also a very fast setup. So I work mostly with laptops, and that means that I have a very fast MacBook Pro, an M1 Pro, and as soon as I arrive at home or in the studio, I don't want to connect everything to my laptop. I don't even want to connect my charger. I just want to place my laptop on the desk, put in one cable, and then I should have access to my hard drives, I should have access to my printers, and I should have access to my monitor, of course. And this is the nice thing about the BenQ. We have that charging option, and of course, inside the BenQ monitor, we also have a USB hub. Now, if you don't have enough USB connections in the monitor, you can, of course, use a USB hub. So no problems there. The other thing that I want to point out, and this has been a frustration for me for many, many years, and I know also for a lot of you guys, it's how do you control your monitor? Now, sometimes, of course, we have to get into the menu to change something. And in most monitors, that's a really frustrating experience for the very simple reason you have those buttons, there's no labeling, you just press somewhere and sometimes this is up and down, sometimes this is down and enter, and this is menu, and this is escape. It goes wrong a lot. And I see a lot of you guys now going like, yeah, we know that problem. BenQ solved this in two very, very simple ways. The first one is there are still buttons under here, but as soon as you are in the menu, there's this little joystick-like button where you can go up, down, left, and right. It sounds very simple. Well, replace four buttons with a little joysticky thingy. I don't know how to name it, but it makes such a huge difference in operating your monitor and diving through those menus. It just makes life a lot easier. And the other thing is, now we all know the puck from BenQ, right? It's the puck that a lot of people use, for example, to switch between color spaces, to see different options, for example, black and white in color, but most of all to compare color spaces. Well, the first thing you will notice about this puck is 
no wires. The nice thing is when you press the front button, you get your information about the input. So that's really nice. And when you press the OK button, you actually go into the menu and you can really easily just navigate through the menus. And that's a huge game changer because now it goes way faster. And of course the Puck did this before, but now you also have it wirelessly. And the nice thing is you can even use the Puck to operate several monitors together. And when we talk about several monitors together, there's something else that's really nice about how BenQ sees color. Now, we all know that sometimes you need more monitors, right? You have this monitor where you're editing on Final Cut Pro, and you have the second monitor with that huge preview. Now, of course, you calibrate both monitors to perfection, and there's still a little bit of a difference between two monitors. Even if you, if you have the same monitors, there can be a slight difference, and most people don't see it, but if you're really concentrating on your work, you will see a slight difference. Now, I have to jump a little bit ahead, there is new software called Palette Master and they totally rewrote the software and one of the options in the software is now actually, you're going to see that in the screenshot here, is that you can calibrate one monitor and use that as a reference for other monitors. So now you can literally link monitors together and they even have a really nice accessory where you can connect the monitors together with only one, well it seems like one continuous hood as you can see in the picture here. So BenQ really thinks about that whole cal color calibration and of course about color for your critical viewing. And let's be honest, color is what evokes emotion and color is also where a lot of people have problems with. Because it looks great on your monitor, but then you send it out to a client and it doesn't really look right. And that's actually why calibration is always such a huge part of the workshops that I teach. I think everybody should shoot with a color checker and of course calibrate their monitors and their output devices, for example a printer. Now I've worked with BenQ for many years now and one of the things that actually pushed me towards BenQ is something that you, probably if you know me a little bit, you already well, suspected this. One of the things that I love about color and about workflow is that it's all manageable. In other words, when we take photography as an example, you set up your lighting, but you're always a little bit depending on the styling, on your model, on the lighting situation, and of course your own creativity. The nice thing about color is that everything is divined. We're working with several color spaces, like for example Adobe RGB, Profoto RGB, sRGB, and for video of course BT2020. We have different gamma curves. And the thing is, even if you don't understand it, you don't have to understand it because it's all fixed. If you have a proper setup calibrated monitor and you have a proper calibrated workflow, you don't have to worry about colors anymore. And that's what I love about BenQ. From the first day I talked with them, they had very much that focus on color accuracy, on calibration and most of all hardware calibration. And I think you heard me say it many, many times. Hardware calibration happens inside the monitor. That's a huge difference between calibration that happens inside your operating system. Now it doesn't mean that you can take your monitor to another computer and it's also calibrated, no. But it does mean that most of the processing power, but also the knowledge of the monitor, is inside the monitor, so calibration is done way more accurate. Well, from day one, BenQ got it right. Hardware calibrations and of course external analyzers. Because let's be honest, an analyzer has to be changed after a few years and we hope that your monitor will survive of course your color, color calibrator. So I was never a big fan of color calibrations inside the monitor with those little pop-up analyzers. I never really got those. It's more like a nice analyzer that you can put in front of your monitor and which you can choose yourself or you can change after for example two or three years or if your analyzer gets broken. That extends the trustability of your monitor for many many years because you know the calibration is done right. Okay. Now when you do your calibration on your monitor what you're actually doing is you're telling your monitor okay you're showing red this way but it should be this way and that depends on the color space you're using. Now every color has three coordinates, an X, a Y and a big Y, U, saturation and luminance. 
The problem is every time you change one of those settings, you influence the other one in a very, very slight way. So that means that doing a calibration on I is absolutely impossible. I know Apple has this solution where you change some sliders and the colors change. It's a toy, it doesn't really work. You need a color analyzer. Now, when you use a color analyzer, you can of course do it manually. This is what I sometimes do for projectors and for, of course, home theater setups. But in the computer, and as we use it for photography and video, everything is automated. And you have to do it every three or four weeks, or maybe every two weeks. And I actually advise you guys to do it every time before you do an important assignment. So every time you do something that's important, run a calibration session. The problem is, the calibrations actually take a long time and you're just watching there and you're looking at all those squares changing, maybe it hurts your eyes and you go, I want to work, I want to continue, come on, hurry up, hurry up. So the next time you, you have to calibrate, you go like, oh, I get this pop-up, I have to, I just click it away, I don't want to calibrate and let's do my work because I'm rushed, right? I will do it tonight. And then at night, no, no, I want to watch Netflix, I will do the calibration tomorrow. Now, always calibrate your monitor before everything that's important. And BenQ helps you there too. Now, there are two ways to calibrate your monitor. We already talked about this. You can do it in software on the operating system or you can do it hardware inside the monitor. And BenQ uses software called Palette Master. And they totally rewrote the software. And this is probably the biggest upgrade you can imagine. Because not only has the speed increased a lot, and I really mean a lot, it's also way more accurate. So we are now getting DEs now under 1.5. Now you probably go like, Frank, that really, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Delta E below 1.5? If you would have said it's below 10, I'm fine with that too. Let me put it this way. Everything for me personally above Delta E4 is a problem. As soon as you come into Delta E7, 6, maybe 5, it's something that people will really start to notice as, hey, there's something really wrong about this monitor. Now, most monitors out of the box actually hit that 7, maybe even 10 or even higher point of Delta E, and we don't want it. So for perfect color representation, we want to have something that's below Delta 2. Now, we already calibrated the monitor with a new Palette Master, of course, and we got way under 1.5 on most settings, even below 1. And that's very, very color accurate. And to be totally honest, it's something that BenQ has in their DNA. When we talk about colors, there's one thing that I think is super, super important, and that's color uniformity. Now, I absolutely love black and white movies. But I also love projectors and, of course, big screen TVs. And one of the things that you will find very, very frustrating to the point of just don't want to watch black and white movies anymore is color uniformity. I want to make sure that if I edit an image in black and white, that it's not only black and white in the center, but it's also black and white on the sides and in the corners. And when it's in the center bright and in the corners it should be bright, I also want it to be in the corners that it's bright and not darker. Now, on a lot of monitors, especially monitors that are not designed for photography or video, there's not much care taken about color uniformity. You just see an image and in the center it's great, but on the sides it's a little bit darker, maybe there's a little bit of a color change. That's something that you don't want in a very, very high accurate monitor. Well, the BenQ has a very nice system for color uniformity. If you go on their website, you can actually see an image where you can move the slider. I will show that now also here, of course. And you can see the difference between without and with that adjustment. And it makes a huge difference in practice. I can already tell you this. So we talked about a little bit of the technical stuff about calibration, of course. Let's talk a little bit about calibration inside the monitor and in the computer. But again, I've done that so many times. I just want to address it for people that watch this video for the first time. You can calibrate on two different ways. You can calibrate inside the operating system, which is fine and it, it works. Or you can calibrate inside the monitor. You have way more power inside the monitor for adjustments. In the computer, you still have to load that profile. In the monitor, you just turn on the monitor and it's there. And you have a higher resolution to set up your calibration. 
And let's be honest, when we think about Photoshop, open up an 8-bit JPEG and start pulling those curves, you will see very quickly that the image just falls apart. Now open up a 16-bit RAW file, yeah, I know there are no real 16-bit RAW files, but just as an example, and now you can push those curves way more up until the point where eventually, of course, the image will break down. Compare it a little bit like that. If the monitor is great out of the box, you can do an operating system calibration and it's okay. But if you want 100% accuracy and you want to make sure that there are no artifacts in your images, you have to calibrate it inside the monitor via a hardware calibration. And this is where BenQ really shines with their new Palette Master software. It's faster, it's more accurate, and you can choose your favorite analyzer. In my case, I'm using the Calibrite series, but if you like Spider more, Data Color, you can use their analyzers too. Just select the analyzer from the pull-down menu. Of course, it has to be supported in that pull-down menu, and you can calibrate to your heart's content. Now, let's look a little bit about the design of the monitor. It looks really nice in landscape mode, but this one you can also turn into portrait mode, as you can see in the picture here. And with the 272U, the hood also works in portrait mode. So they really thought about many different ways in how you want to use your monitor. So it's not just a monitor that's dumped on the market like, hey, these are the specs, enjoy. It's a company that really thinks about their creators. Do you do a lot of video, design or photography? Okay, let's create a monitor that's really hitting all the marks for your work. And well, that really shows. Okay, another thing about the monitor. When we talk about color and color accuracy, we don't just talk about taking the picture and seeing it on the screen, and that's easy. We also want to make sure that our clients see the images the way that they are used to those images. And that's why we, of course, do the hardware calibration. Now, one might say, hey, Frank, I calibrate my monitor, but what if my client doesn't calibrate my monitor? Yeah, that's, that's the real truth, in all honesty. But don't really think about it too much. If your client doesn't calibrate your monitor, he or she is used to that image. So if he sees something that's green, he is used to that sort of green. If you don't calibrate your monitor, and that means that you don't follow the standard, your images will look great on your monitor, but on your client it will look really wonky because you have your own problems and your client's problems. And if they enhance each other, and even if they don't, the image will look different from what he or she is used to. So always calibrate your monitor. But what if you want to print? Now I hear you going like, hey Frank, of course I calibrate my monitor, and can I calibrate my printer? Yes. There are spectrometers out there that literally calibrate your ICC profile for your printer. You print out a color checker, you use your spectrometer to meter all those squares, it creates a profile and that's done. And that's for your paper and for your inks. But let's keep it simple. You've calibrated your monitor and it looks great. Now you're going to print and you use the inks from your printer, you use the paper from your printer manufacturer, and you use the proper profiling. So you do everything right. And you look at your print and you go like, hey, but they don't look the same. How is that possible? Well, let's take a little bit of a sidestep. The monitor uses three colors, RGB, and they emit light. So that means that when you watch at it, it's a light source going into your eyes and uses the color RGB. Now, when we take a look at a print, it's actually a piece of paper that absorbs light. It doesn't reflect light back like a monitor does. It does, of course, reflect, otherwise we couldn't see any color because we only see reflections, but it's still more absorptive. And that's the problem. Even if you have the proper calibration, we have a different form of seeing those images. So, for example, with a monitor, we need to be in a darkened area. We need to have controlled lighting and preferably as dark as possible so we can literally see every single detail. But if you look at a piece of paper in the dark, we don't see anything. So for a piece of paper, we need a lot of light hitting that paper and preferably a full spectrum light source. But even then, <laughs> It's still very difficult to judge what you see on your monitor compared to on your printer because it doesn't stop just by emitting light or absorbing light. It's also that your monitor uses RGB, but your printer uses cyan, magenta, yellow and black. Where black, by the way, is not really a color, but it's so-called key, CMYK. 
and key determines the brightness of a color. One could say also the saturation or the deepness of the color, depending on in what mood you are. I always call it saturation. So we have different colors, RGB versus cyan, magenta, yellow, black. We have different way of emitting light, blowing the light literally straight in your eyes or reflecting it. So even if we calibrate both, how can we compare it? Well, that's where BenQ also has a solution and it's called It's actually software that you install on your computer and you select the printer you use and at that point you get a proper representation of how it looks on your monitor and how it will look on the print. In most cases you just change a little bit and it will look so much better. And I saved that for last. Because this is the biggest improvement I've seen in monitors in years. But it's something that's very hard to explain until you see it. Now, as you can see here, I'm doing this video with you guys and I have my laptop in front of me and I have the monitor over here and I have a very bright light in front of me. But do you see anything of the glare in the monitor? No, you don't. Now, even on my laptop screen now, and I have hardly any lights behind me, I can already see a little bit of lens, of, of sorry, of glare. As soon as I angle my screen, this is a little bit better. This is really bad, and this is okay. Now, when I'm just surfing the internet, I don't have any problems at all with this. If I create music, I, I, I don't really care. It's as long as I can see it, I'm fine. But as soon as I start video editing, or even worse, if I start doing photography, now I start to frustrate the heck out of myself by always concentrating on that glare on the screen. It's just freaking annoying and it really takes me out of my workflow and I'm constantly seeing like, yeah, this is better. No, and I'm constantly adjusting that I don't see that reflection. Now, there are two different ways of approaching this. The first one is of course, just ignore it, but it doesn't really work. And in the past, you have to remember, we didn't really have a choice because if you choose a glossy screen, you had a high color space, so Adobe RGB, you had vibrant colors, deep blacks, and it just looks freaking amazing and you have a lot of light output. Now as soon as you went for a laptop or a screen with a matte screen, you often didn't hit that Adobe RGB color space, it looks dull, it didn't have any contrast, the blacks were a little bit washed out and it just didn't look right. Well, look at this monitor. We have 99% Adobe RGB. With ease, we hit that 120, 130 CDM, no problem at all. And we have perfect blacks, no crushed blacks. We see details in the black, it just looks great. So how did they do it? I don't have a clue, but they did. And this is the part where I think the review really takes a different approach. It's important to have an Adobe RGB monitor. It's important to have hardware calibration. It's important to know that you can, for example, use different monitors together to have the same quality of your color reproduction. It's important to have a puck that's wireless. It's important to have that little joystick or that wiring. But if you can't use the monitor because there's a lot of glare on your screen, it takes the fun out of editing. Now I'm gonna show you very quickly. I'm gonna take my phone, I'm gonna put it on the strobe and I'm gonna put it on full power. And I'm just going to move it, as you can see here, around the screen. Now, of course, you're going to see glare. Uh, listen, I, I'm literally holding my phone straight up to the monitor. So, of course, you're going to see glare. But now let's compare it to my laptop screen. And I'm talking about the Apple MacBook Pro M1 Pro, which, according to a lot of people, has the best screen on the market. And I have to be honest, I agree. It's great. But look at the glare. Look at the difference between what you saw on the BenQ and what you now see on one of the best laptops. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. So that's one of the biggest selling points, I think, for the BenQ, that awesome coding. We talked about colors. Let's put up the ante a little bit more. If you're not convinced about buying the BenQ monitor yet, I actually don't know what I have to say, but maybe this will help you. Did you know that Pentone now charges money to use their Pentone system? Yes, they do. And with the BenQ monitor, you actually get a one year free subscription to Pentone, also on your mobile. So that means that you don't have to pay for Pentone. You can still open your old work or works that is sent to you by other people that uses Pentone and you can use the Pentone colors. You get it for free with BenQ. 
Now, of course, when you're in the Netherlands, you go like, hey, can we get a discount on BenQ? Yes, we can. I can't give you the code straight, of course, because, well, we only have a limited amount of codes. But if you're in the European Union, so also besides the Netherlands, we always make the joke with the Netherlands, of course, just email me and I will give you a code for a 10% discount on certified BenQ's monitors. And of course, the new test 272U also falls under the category of 10% discount. So email me for the code and I will give it to you. I think this really tells the story about how I like the BenQ. I just love the leather look. I, I think I'm going to play some hard drives over here and maybe the color checker so it can't move. I love a clean desk so that one cable for me is a big thing. I love the glare or exactly the not glare. I love that you get the hood for free. The design is great. You can use it in portrait mode and landscape. Adobe RGB 99%. You can of course emulate sRGB, Adobe RGB. You have all the HDR, so you can uh, add it to your heart's content in HDR. There's actually nothing that I really miss about this monitor. Maybe a 32 inch version, thank you. But overall, I think BenQ hit a home run and literally hit it out of the park with the 272U, the SW272U, let's be complete. And I'm very, very proud to have the monitor in our studio and we use it daily and it's one of our favorite monitors to do editing on, especially in situations where we have a little bit of light hitting the monitor, where other monitors just have that little bit of glare. This one is just great. If you have any questions, guys, leave them in the comments below. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but most of all, tell other people about our channel and about the BenQ monitors so we can grow our channel. Thank you so very much for watching, guys, and see you again next time on the BenQ monitor. Bye, guys.